of First Class Counselors, where we give camp counselors insider tips and advice on how to make a camper's summer the best it can be. Because whether you are brand new to the camp world or you've got a few years under your belt, being a camp counselor isn't the most intuitive thing out there. So we are here to demystify and make camp accessible and make the camp counselor experience amazing so you can make the camper's experience amazing. Yeah, my name is Oliver. I'm the executive director at YMCA Camp Winona in De Leon Springs, Florida. And my name is Matt Wilford. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the director of overnight programs for Camp Fire Circle. And today we are talking about parents and the adults in your camp life. All those people who are probably above the age of 30, uh, no names to be announced here, but <laughs> it can be a tough job uh, talking to that person uh, who's going to be handing off their most valuable child to you, um, but also that typically older camp director who maybe just doesn't get it, man, um, <clears throat> but has been through that ringer. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these adults at camp, right? They're the misfit toys. There's not many of them. <laughs> if you think about a lot of camps, predominantly everybody is below the age of like 25. So Let's talk about these odd ducks who have just kind of sat there in the camp world for all these years. Again, not naming names, Matt, not saying any names for who these people <laughs> might be, but uh, let's talk about these people. Well, yeah, and, and I, I think um, I, I'll just say it as someone who's post 30, almost 33. By the time this episode comes out, I will be 33 years old. Um, and I... I guess I'm one of those adults now, and even I have noticed it, and I, um, that it's not intuitive to talk to adults. And I don't and whether when I was in my when I was 16 and 17 as a first, as a first year counselor, it wasn't intuitive. And talking to parents is intimidating, especially if you know um, the, if you don't have that background. The only adults you talk to in your life are like your friends, parents, probably your teachers and your parents. And then if you have a job, you've gotten some practice at it. So that's helpful. But when you layer in the fact that you are taking care of their kids, like the pressure is on for sure. And we only see them for um, like a, a glimpse in the camp experience. Um, and whether it's a camper's parent or maybe it's an alumni who's on site or talking to your director who might be an adult, um, it, it's not intuitive all the time. And especially since the pandemic, we haven't flexed those muscles a lot. So we wanted to give you some tips uh, about how to handle it. So we're gonna talk in this episode about how to choose your audience, adjusting the way you speak to the person you're speaking to, how to talk to parents, and then maybe how to talk to um, an adult camp director or an adult supervisor, just to give you um, some of those tips. And maybe some of you know these things already and it'll be a good review, but um, it kind of gets everyone on the same page. So that like baseline of level that when a parent or an adult has a conversation with you, that they walk away feeling like you are a trusted person and that you should be at camp. You should be taking care of kids. So all these tips will help you set that good first impression. Yeah. It's cool when somebody who is an adult uh, who has spoken to one of my staff comes up to me and goes, Hey, you got a good kid uh, over in that cabin there. Like I, I trust them taking care of my kid this week or, Hey, that kid was pretty impressive. Um, I like that counselor. Uh, and, and parents do, they, they shout you guys out. Uh, and also so does like, I have board members as a nonprofit, they're around camp and they see those successful interactions and, uh, you know, some of these other adults that make their way out to site. So, um, it's important. And the cool thing about it is those can lead to connections that can lead to future prospects. Um, so it's important for you. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in this next section, which is how to choose your audience. Um, so when you're talking to an adult, why do we have to adjust the way we speak to somebody who is older? Um, and that's other than raising the volume so they can hear us because they're going deaf. Matt, what are some ways that we speak to these older people? Well, the old jokes are really coming out in full force here, Oliver. That's, that's, I'll have to get you back sometime. <laughs> well, I, I think I said it off the top, but, but these first impressions, the impression that you make really matters because the stakes are so high. We're looking after kids, the most important thing in the world to some of these adults. Or if, if it's an alumni at, that's coming to camp and you're talking to them, you are now in charge of this place that they love so much. And if you're talking to a camp director, 
then you are in charge of that camper's experience and that camp's reputation. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of trust in the staff that we hire to work at camp with us. And, um, you know, we want to know that they, that they're taking this seriously and the way that we speak, I, and I don't want us to come across, or maybe I guess me as the resident old person here, apparently that I, you don't have to be stuffy. You don't have to be perfectly polished in everything you say. This isn't the King's speech, but we want to know that you know, you are taking this job seriously, that you are taking this um, experience seriously, and that you're confident too um, in what you're doing. So I, I think that's, that's kind of the framing is that first impression that you make is really, really important. And you have such a small glimpse to convince a parent that they have done the right thing in leaving their kid in your care. Um, so all of those things that you can do to, is, is, is important. And we'll get into the specific tips a bit later, but, um, also, like when, when it comes to a conversation or it comes to these short interactions, when it comes to thinking about your audience, who you're speaking to, you want to understand how your intentions and their intentions are going to jive in that conversation. And what I mean by that is you under, understanding how um, what their intentions are or what their hopes or aspirations are from this conversation will be affected by the way that you are speaking so how what you will say will or won't match the outcomes that they are looking for so putting yourself in their shoes there you know a, a parent is dropping their kid off from camp what do they want to know they want to know that my kid is safe they want to know that this person is going to take it seriously they want to know that that um you know that, that they are professional that they have the skills that i need so if i use language that is like you know if i use a lot of slang or if i you know i i show that i don't care through the way that i'm speaking then i'm not matching their intention in that moment um so really putting yourself in the shoes of who you're speaking to and try to understand what they would hope for from that right so a parent wants to know their kid's going to be safe an alumni wants to know that you care just as much as they did when they worked at camp that you're going to care for this place and your camp director wants to know that you're taking this job seriously you're taking the reputation at camp seriously um and i i think in any conversation with an adult if you can empathize with them in that way you're going to be starting in the right place yeah, I like the the empathize, empathize with them and how they're feeling, right? If it's an alumni coming back, how are you taking care of that cabin that they, you know, were a counselor in once upon a time? Um, are you doing maybe some of the same tricks and things that they did once upon a time or the same ceremonies and communicate to that to them, right? Like, um, oh, <clears throat> man, yeah, you must have done this tradition as a counselor as well. We're still doing it today. Um this is like how that tradition went, you know, those alumni would love hearing some of those stories. Uh, and it's camp focused, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my, my big advice for you is understand you represent an organization, not just the camp, but you yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> how you present yourself is, yeah, you're the, you're the rep representation for all of your coworkers as well, uh, when you're talking to, if, even if it's your director, uh, but for the parents as well, like you're the, you're the staff representation that they get for how everybody else is going to treat their child as well. So understand you represent your friends as well. Um, but very importantly, you represent you. And I like to look at camp, like Matt was just talking about alumni. Uh, I like to look at camp kind of as a fraternity or sorority, not as in like the party house craziness that a lot of people think about with the Greek life. But uh, those organizations have a foundation of being able to support those who have come through that. And if you are a representative at your camp that is deemed as, you know, one of those good counselors, one of those people who, you know, did what was expected of them, you know, had that ability to speak well to adults and, and hold themselves to that responsibility level, uh, you are going to be a person that, you know, if you're looking for something in the future, there's going to be people who can help you kind of get to where you need to be or give advice in those categories um, and whatever it might be, right? Uh, <clears throat> and I think that's kind of a strange thing that camp can kind of do sometimes. You know, it matters on the camp and where you go and what their culture is, but uh, sometimes, you know, representing yourself in the right way can, can help you out, right? You get a, you know, a little check mark next to your name for that's a, that's a good kid right there. 
you know, that old person saying that we always have good kid, you know, they're a good kid. <laughs> um, so understand you represent yourself, you represent the others around you and you do represent the organization as well. Uh, the next is making sure you're speaking to the right person about the right thing, right? If you're going to one supervisor and you're jumping over another supervisor's head, if you're, um, <clears throat> as we kind of introduce the section, picking the wrong audience here, um, you know, you're going to a problem that, you know, you're putting on other people's plate or the wrong person's plate. That's usually kind of indicative that you like, don't know what you're doing. You're, right. you're, you're not really paying attention to what the hierarchy is and how things are organized. So if you do have an issue and you don't know who to go to, that might be the first question you ask is say, Hey, I'm having an issue with this. Do you know who I can talk to to help me out with it? Um, because now you're working with an adult on how to identify an issue, not just presenting them with a problem. And let me tell you, as like a camp director, uh, I don't want you coming to me with the problem. I want you to come with me with the problem and maybe a solution that you might want to try and solve, or at least the idea that you want to work with me or get my advice on how to fix said problem. Um, not just go, Hey, uh, director, this is a problem. You got to fix it now. Right. Um, and yeah, it might be something that totally the director has to fix. Uh, the same conversation kind of goes to, you know, with a parent, maybe not speaking to the right person because um, most of the time you only have two parents to pick from. Uh, but when you go to speak to the parent about maybe something that's going on, you know, are you speaking to them in a way that it's, hey, I'm looking for your advice on how to work with maybe your child in this way. And we'll talk about asking questions and in, in kind of when we talk to parents, um, but that's an important one is it's, picking your audience, but also picking your subject matter and how to go about it. The next thing that I say is timing, right? With parents, it's a little bit difficult. Your timing is check in, check out for overnight camp. Um, the same thing happens for day camp, but you might not have a longer conversation there. It might be kind of quick and to the point. And you just need to know how to time up that conversation when you have that parent um, on how you're gonna wanna organize what you are saying to them. Um, and how you go about it, right? We'll talk about how to communicate properly, but finding that right timing is sometimes tough, especially in those two worlds, because the other timing is you're calling them on the phone in the middle of the day, and they're going to get a little bit nervous why they're getting a phone call about their child in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an important thing, I think, as well, is your timing with your audience. Um, and going on the camp director side of timing, right, is you will never feel like you're getting good timing to go up to your camp director, um, whether you're pulling them aside in the dining hall or you need to go to their office on a separate time when like you have time off, but, and they look super busy all the time. Uh, <clears throat> all of that is true, but making sure you find the right timing sometimes is just by saying, Hey, look, I didn't have another time to speak you speak with you because camp is so busy. Um, but bad timing is a big thing. And, <laughs> I will tell you what, this is something that I work on with my staff right now really, really hard because, um, you know, I'll be having a conversation with my boss, right? My per my boss who runs the entirety of my YMCA association and he'll be out here and I am doing the classic, hey, I'm talking to an adult right now. I'm an adult talking to my form of an adult. And <laughs> all of a sudden I will have a staff member come up to me who is leading fishing and just goes, Oliver, I don't know how to fish. And I have to be like, okay, maybe not the best time to present this problem to me, or maybe talking to our assistant camp director may have been a better uh, conversation time, but maybe not when I'm talking to the CEO and admitting that you right now have 12 kids in fishing and you don't know how to cast a fishing pole. Um, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to have someone else maybe solve that. Or um, maybe you can come up to me and say, Hey, Oliver, I have something I need to talk to you about. Can I just steal you for a moment and then pull me off to the side because Generally speaking, if you need to be stolen away from someone for a moment, someone is typically going to be like, okay, yep, go with them for a minute. They have something they need to talk to you about. I can wait a moment. Um, my, even my boss will understand that timing aspect of things. Hmm. And when you engage in conversation, here are just a couple of rules that I have. Um, you know, why are you engaged in this conversation? Why is it so important? What are you trying to get across when you have that conversation? And what's the outcome of it going to be, whether it's a good outcome or bad outcome. Can you predict what that conversation is going to be, whether it's with the parent or with the child? And it's just, it's the same thing as what athletes say before they go into a game is they try to picture 
how they're going to play, how the game's going to go, how they're going to shoot a basketball, how they're going to kick a soccer ball. They visualize successes, right? So you are trying to visualize what the outcome is and why you're going into that conversation in the first place. And then the last little piece of advice that I give to everybody uh, on kind of talking to adults is um, parents love, not always love, but adults typically want to hear you talk about what are your goals? What are you doing? You know, are you in college? Are you working in a vocational field? Like, what are you trying to do with your life? Um, and they may ask you about it. And the whole idea is they just want to know that the person that is going to be taking care of their kid, the person they're hiring or working for them is focused on something more than just kind of enjoying every moment. With that being said, I have 100% talked to parents who like just want to hear, hey, what does the staff do on the weekends? Like, what do they do to enjoy themselves and let off steam? Yeah, they want to kind of know if my staff are getting in trouble in something, which no one would ever admit to them. But they want to get an idea of like, you know, what kind of type of people are we hiring? Again, I go back to the very first point. You represent an organization. You represent who you are and who you're going to be and what these parents are kind of buying into and what their director is buying into. So I think it's important for you to understand, like, when you're having these conversations, um, you know, what are you kind of selling to them? Are you selling this person who has goals and aspirations and things that they're looking forward to and that they're working on? Or are you kind of selling this person who's just like, oh man, like, uh, we're going to go to the beach this weekend and, uh, we're just going to kind of be out there and relax all the time. Like, don't get me wrong. You get to relax. You get to do those human things, but, um, parents want to know that their kid is in good hands and, you know, showing that you have, a uh, steam behind you, uh, is a really helpful thing to do. So, um, yeah. those are some of my topics for when you pick when you've got an audience with some parents, how you want to kind of engage in that. Yeah. I, I want to just like draw back really quick. I thought what you were saying about when you were talking to your boss and the counselor came up to you to share that thing, like I want like also thinking about when you said like, what's the outcome or like, what is the fallout of even that one conversation going to be? Because in that moment, that counselor was thinking about their needs. Oliver, I need to know how to fish. The intention is is good. Like, I don't know how to fish and I have these kids and I'm scared and I, and I need these things. But like, also, how do you feel that that conversation is going to be perceived by the person Oliver is talking to? And, and you don't know always if it's your boss's boss that is coming to like be with you. But I, I would hope that the counseling staff that I work with or the staff that I work with always would just assume that like, because it's, it's your reputation on the line too. I'm saying like you're Oliver, it's your reputation. And for your, and hopefully your boss is an understanding, kind, awesome person. I'm sure they are. But like, it would raise an eyebrow if like, what, why did Oliver hire this person who doesn't know how to fish? And then, you know, like that, that just, that negative outcome didn't have to happen in that moment because you were feeling unsure about how to fish. Um, right. So I think Oliver is totally right in saying, Hey, can I, can you, can you chat with me for a second? Can I pull you aside is the much better outcome because that's just kind for your reputation, for Oliver's reputation and the reputation of the camp as a whole. Yeah. And I think too, on that point, it's not just, oh, I don't know how to do something, but even if you're having trouble in another area, like, you know, I, I have another example where a staff member just had a behavioral incident, right? Like they had a camper who was struggling and, uh, you know, they came up to me and they were smart and pulled me aside and, and said, I need to talk to you for a moment instead of having that conversation in front of it. But like things happen right? Like there's incidences that happen and you have to work. And if you have a boss who is supervising someone who is doing childcare, they're going to have to understand that in their position. Um, but it doesn't mean they have to like hear about it directly or kind of have to be a part of the problem because then a, they're going to, you know, have their opinion on what the solution should be. Um, they're going to have an opinion on why it's not getting handled in the first place. So I think it's important for you to understand that timing aspect of how and when and what you need to do to talk to them. Uh, so Matt, do you want to take on this next part of the conversation? 
Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, we're already talking about talking with your camp director and that. So why don't we, we go to that? We'll come back to how to talk to parents. So let, let's get into that. Like, how do you have these conversations with the, the adult, whether it's the one that's supervising you or they're a couple steps removed when you're talking to someone who is within your camp's hierarchy um, and you need to get something across to them. And as, as we tee this section up, I want to also call out that, that that is an intimidating thing. And Oliver and I are both speaking from an incredible amount of privilege in that when, when, it's, when we're on site, we are the people in charge and we have all of the power. Um, you know, so I, I get it that it is hard and um, that even though I try not to be a scary person and I, I sing in campfire skits and, and Oliver, I know you're the same type of person, but there's just that natural relationship in there. So, you know, do your best It's it, and striking a balance. You know, you can be yourself and be friendly, um, but remembering that we're not your friend, like as, as, as your, your boss at camp, we are friendly with each other and we should be, but we're not friends. So you're not speaking to us in the exact same way you'd like speak to your best friend. Um, but again, going in with what's the intention. And sometimes the intention is just to chat. You don't always need to come to us with a problem. Like if we're sitting at your table at dinner time, it doesn't need to just be like work related stuff. We can talk as two human beings. Um, but again, there is, there is a difference overall. And um, you can't, you know, if you talk about how like hammered you want to get this weekend and your boss is at the, <laughs> is sitting, you're having that conversation with your boss. I'm not just like turning that off <laughs> as, as a camp director. Um, so, you know, choosing your audience and choosing what you're saying to that audience is, is great. But if we go back to um, like, if you need something and you need to go to your camp director, there's two big things that I wish every camp staff would, in, would internalize when they're chatting with me. One is to be clear. Even if you don't know the answer to the problem that you're having, do your best to be as clear as possible about what you have experienced or what you are experiencing um, or what you are perceiving to be experienced. And I'm going to tease that out in every conversation. I'm, I'm going to ask you questions to help clarify, but being clear is really important. If, if someone comes up to me, let's, let's use that fishing example and saying, I don't know how to fish. That's not a very clear statement because that, I don't think that that's true, right? You don't, you don't not know how to fish. You, you've seen someone fish probably in a TV commercial, at least I'm sure you have picked up the fishing rod. It would be a horrible mistake on our part. If we actually gave you that fishing assignment and you had no idea how to do it. That's, that is our bad completely. So what is it that you're ha having trouble with? Is it that the rods are, are like the lines are all tangled that you can't find the tackle? Is it that like, you know, you don't know how to teach fishing. Those are, those are things that we, where we can start to like actually understand. And it'll just save us time so that we can like get to the answer as, as quick as possible and help, help as soon as possible. Cause we want to help. That's it's our whole job to support you as camp staff. Um, and, and we want to just get to that as quick as possible to make sure that camp is still going on and you're feeling good. The other thing is to be honest. And I would a thousand percent, if you made a mistake or if something happened, I would just rather you be honest with me in the first place about what's going on. Um, because again, we're trying to solve a problem here. If it's a camper behavioral incident, if it's something going on with staff, if it's a policy thing, you being honest, is just going to help in so many ways. It'll help us get to the, the answer as quick as possible. Um, it will leave an impression that looks really good on you. Um, you know, the, the worst thing that can happen is that I find out that someone's not being truthful with me and then like your reputation takes a big hit. How, how do I trust this person? How do I like trust the information that they're giving me when it comes to these big serious situations? Um, are they gonna be honest with parents? You know, that, that is a really important thing. And I would rather someone come up to me and say, hey, Matt, I really messed up. And I, I, I got to share it with you because I need some help getting out of this one. And I, I might be like, okay, uh, you know, thank you for like coming to me. Thank you for being honest. And um, I'm here to help. And, and depending on how big the mess up is, you maybe think it's bigger than it actually is. And um, I, I think by being clear and being honest, it allows us to do our job, which is not only the help, but it's for us to use our years of camp experience 
to find the, the most efficient and effective solution for it. And we might not have it, or we might not be the best person to solve the problem, but you know, Oliver and I have like contacts from across the camp industry that can help solve some of the bigger problems, or we might just know who's available at what time or how to shift resources around to solve a problem faster. So um, we want to help, but your honesty and clarity is going to help us help you the best that we can. Yeah, I think you, you're making a, that great point of like, if you go to that person who uh, you're going to them with something that's specific, right? Like, hey, this is what's going on. Um, there's a resource that adults have from that experience that they have, whether that's experience in camp, right? Whether like you could have a first time director who is working on your site and they still have background knowledge that might be able to help you get your answer, right? Like even that fishing, maybe they just personally fish, right? Or they know someone who can connect you to it. So um, I, I love the, just be that, just be clear on what's actually going on and that you need help with. Um, I think an important thing is going back to what Matt was saying that they're not your friend, right? Like um, camp directors can be friendly. They can sit down with you at lunch and have a great conversation. These are all things that they can do. Um, and, and they can be personable, right? Like I have a hundred percent been with staff and had some conversations that are on a more personal level because at camp you live on site, right? And it's just part of the deal because of eventually your personal life or there will be situation on camp where personal life affects what's going on in camp. It shouldn't happen. You should avoid it um, because there should still be that separation. But at the end of the day, if you live and work on the same place, they're going to be in second, that, that kind of clash a little bit, right? So something to really, really understand is that your camp director, while they are themselves, they are a person, they are not fully themselves. They have to think about the well-being of the organization that they work for. They can care about you and your well-being and maybe what your future or outcomes might be. They can help you care about your career path. Um, and, and honestly, if, if you are asking for career advice, they should prioritize your career over you sale working at camp. Any camp director who's holding on to you and not letting you go, um, you, that might be a problem. But um, that, just note that they are not themselves. Like they are not going to talk to you about some of the personal interests that they might have, right? Or some personal hobbies that they might enjoy or do that are inappropriate to talk about with staff, right? Like what Matt was talking about. Your camp director, if they are sitting down with you at lunch and talking about how they like to get blackout drunk, they are probably crossing a line in conversation with you, right? For sure. Uh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, and the next thing is that if you do come to them with a problem, right? Like, like I can't fish or whatever our example has been throughout the episode. Note that their brain is not going to think about just the, okay, with few can't fish, is it because you can't cast? Is it because of this or whatever? They're not going to always just think about that specific. That's why that clarity from your side is important. But with their mindset is going to typically be is what's the entire picture here, right? It, like for me, for example, my thought process went, went, oh, I thought this counselor could fish. They've been coming to camp for six years of their life. They've been put on fishing. They've been going to fishing. Does this mean that we have such a poor fishing program that this kid can go through six summers and not know how to cash, cast a fishing rod? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have some bigger things that I have to like solve here. So that's, that's one place our mind goes. And you can think about the anxiety that ensues from that. <laughs> the next part about this is, um, what do I have to prioritize in this situation, right? So wait, somebody might be like, oh man, oh, we need better fishing rods because we just can't cast these fishing rods. They're the worst type of rod. And then your camp director kind of has to look at you and go, well, I'm sorry, Amazon Prime takes a day to deliver. <laughs> You're not going to get a new fishing rod right now. And you've got 12 kids who are looking to fish. So in the end of, in the, since the beginning of time or the beginning of fishing, all they needed to do was fish was a line, a hook, and a worm, and not even a stick. That was elevated fishing at one point. So we can go back to prehistoric fishing, which was done by the Cro-Magnon men, and we can figure out how to fish for a day, right? And then 
I, as the camp director or wh whoever your camp director is, will then have to prioritize, well, what's our solution for the future in fishing, right? And that's the next step. Um, and I think that's something that's really important because we're talking about something, I think, relatively small right now, which is fishing. But this goes all the way to as big as like, well, how do we maintain the camp property, right? I can't tell you how many times counselors have come up to me because they don't like the bathhouse or they don't like um, the swim area, whatever it might be, like a facilities related issue. Or maybe there's a bigger policy issue, right? Like a huge one I know camp directors talk about is uh, gender neutral cabins and what's the future of camp with, with male and female cabins. Like that's big picture stuff. And yeah, is it good to know that I have a lot of, you know, 18 to 22 year old staff who are really invested in what the future of that's going to be? Yes. But I do not have the financial backing to create a gender neutral bathhouse, right? It's not within our right now to knock down a building and build something. But what I can think about is, hey, how do we prioritize making sure that if we do have a camper who comes to site, who may require that facility, that we can find a way to facilitate their need that doesn't require me to knock down a building, right? Um, <clears throat> so understand that the big picture is sometimes outside of their scope of ability, but it's not without their scope of sight. Then sometimes you come to them with something that is specific to your moment right there that they might not be able to solve or they can solve right there and then, um, but it's part of a bigger problem. Sorry to sum that all up when I, I probably could have kept that really simple right there, but. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's just but I think that your, your scope of, of responsibility is just wider than that individual moment. So. Whereas, and, and the answer might be simple to you, but there's a whole lot of reasons and com complexities and budgets and um, competing priorities that, that we have to deal with. So, you know, you might not always get what you were expecting out of that conversation, but it, it is certainly not because we, we don't care. It just means that there's a lot of other stuff going on in that moment. And sometimes there's like really weird policies that we put in place because there's a culture that we're trying to create. Like, for example, and I think I've said this on the show before, we have something called morning mission at Camp Winona, where a leadership staff member will go up in front of all campers at the beginning of the day and they, they present a positive um, value through story and or skits or whatever it might be um, to present amongst the campers. Right. They, they're giving one of those important values that we think is so important here at camp. And I get staff that ask me all the time or even campers who are like, oh, can I do morning mission? Can I go up there? And I go, no, unfortunately, our policy is that it's only leadership staff members. And I put that policy in place is because I want you to look up to those people. I want you to be them one day. I want you to emulate them while they're speaking about these really great values so that you will not just see the positivity in, what they're, in them, right? And that you have a role model up there, but also you take the value that they say to heart, right? So now in order to become like them, you need to listen to the story of the value and then continue on so that maybe one day, yeah, you will be the person up there or at the very least your admiration for that person and the story they're telling will make you follow the value that is being put there. So it's a big picture thing, but it does mean, hey, look, I'm gonna put my foot down on that like 14 to 16 year old teenage, like teen leader camper who really wants to get up there on stage because I'm like, hey, this is a really important thing that I want to make sure we're practicing. Hmm. And that's just me. And maybe I'm just a stubborn old man director <laughs> who's putting his foot down and saying, no, this is the way it has to be. Yeah. But there's a reason behind it. There's a purpose. And um, there's a culture that's getting created behind it. Now, with that being said, every once in a while, I might say, you know what? I'm going to have a prize today. And that is whoever can do this value the best, like pick up the most trash around camp, right? we'll get to speak at morning mission. And then it's a huge deal that like one person got to speak at one of the 50 morning missions we do, but uh, it gives it that specialness. So uh, those are my big points for talking to your camp director. And now we got to get back up to the top here and talk about how to talk to those parents. So Matt, I, I got a parent at the door. What am I saying to them? <laughs> well, well, I mean, this is like the classic camp director or camp counselor first impression with a parent, right? And, and I mean, just to make sure our context is the same. I know everyone does like camper drop off differently, but 
you know, I, I think of it like I'm waiting in the cabin, the kids, some of the kids have arrived and I have this like steady stream of parents coming to drop their kids off, which is more common now that we're like post pandemic. I know it was probably weird. You know, that's another reason why we should do this is because maybe you've only seen like parents from the car and then the kids just like get out of the car and leave their parents from there. You're, you're having actual, an actual like conversation now with parents. So, you know, I, my advice comes from this, like, this you know skit in your in my head of a parent coming and dropping their kid off and the first thing which sounds counterintuitive is i'm not talking to the parents when i have that camper coming to my cabin i'm instantly getting down on that camper's level um so i'm squatting down or kneeling down on the ground and i'm greeting that camper with with a handshake with a high five or i'm saying hi to them and I am putting my attention on them. I'm showing that parent, right? Who am I speaking to? Who's the audience? What's the point? I'm showing that parent that I am camper focused, that I am putting my attention to that camper. And then after I've said, okay, well, welcome to camp. My name is Matt. I'm going to be your counselor this week. Are you excited for camp? Oh my gosh, that's great. What are you excited about? You know, I've had that conversation. All right, your bunk, you can pick your bunk or maybe I've got your bunk picked out. Um, why don't you drop your stuff off and then we'll, you can start this craft that I have in the middle because I'm a first class counselor and I have a craft that they can just jump into right away. But then campers off doing their thing. I'm standing up and I am, you know, making eye contact with this caregiver and I'm changing my tone and the change in tone and the change in like, the way you're speaking again choosing your audience will show that parent like oh this person understands that i'm different and it's not i'm not going to be any less enthusiastic but but like i lower my my like range of voice just a little bit and um i say hey it's so nice to meet you thanks for dropping off timmy i've used i'm using their name i'm using the kid's name right away i'm really excited that timmy's here we're gonna have such a great week um, how are you folks feeling about their week at camp? That's a question. I'm just asking them, how are you feeling about it? How was your drive? Those kinds of things to start engaging in conversation. But already I've shown that professionalism that I'm going to engage. I'm going to actively seek out their opinion and, and how they're doing. And I know that for the people who listen to this podcast are the people that probably do this anyway, but it is not intuitive if you've never done it before. Um, so, you know, eye contact, all those things are really important. Oh, and, and for eye contact, I think I've given this tip on the podcast before, but, um, here's a trick about making eye contact with adults. And I use this, if I ever got in trouble in the principal's office, not that I did very often, but you can use this tip for making eye contact. If it's uncomfortable for you, then you can look at the spot right in the middle of a person's eyes and they will never know that you are not making eye contact with them. It is literally impossible to tell. So if eye contact is weird for you, use that trick and no one will ever know the difference. Um, and the last tip I'll give is one actually that a camp staff gave to me a couple of years ago is called the Ford method of keeping conversation with someone. And this is really helpful. Like if you are end up like touring somebody around camp or touring a parent around, and Ford is an acronym, so F-O-R-D, just like the, the, the vehicle. And it's just to remind you that you can like lean on these topics of conversation and it's really easy to get someone talking. So F stands for family. So really easy because their family is literally at camp with you. So you can say, hey, you know, hey do you have any other kids? Or, um, hey, uh, you know, how, how long has this person been coming to camp? Talking about their family members can really get them going. O stands for occupation. Hey, what, what, you know, what do you do? What, what does your everyday life look like? That's a great way to get them talking and, and finding out more about them. Also a potentially good networking opportunity. Um, R stands for recreation. Hey, tell me about, you know, what, what's something fun that you and Timmy like to do together outside of camp? That's a great way to get them talking about their hobbies. And D, what are their dreams? And, and this one's even easier because you can talk about their dreams for their kids. Um, you know, hey, hey, what do you hope for from this experience for Timmy? What do you what do you want them to get out of it? Awesome, just remembering to uh, awesome way to keep them engaged in that conversation. Um, if especially if you need to kill some time, you can run through F O R D and repeat F O R D, um, and that'll get you through most conversations with adults.
I like it. Um, I'm definitely going to be teaching my staff the Ford method for the summer and just get them. I have a whole article that I'll, I'll pop in the show notes that um, people can read about it. I feel like you could do a really good, like little TikTok with that. It's like, Hey man, my name's Matt and I'm going to teach you Ford. Right. <laughs> for all the, uh, I, I don't know, man, getting me on TikTok is going to be a hard sell, especially if you've called the old, this whole episode. I don't know if I'll make hey. it on there. I feel like old people make it on TikTok all the time. Usually they're falling, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. My advice for talking to parents, uh, like Matt, who gave you a really cool acronym, I'm saying ask questions. It's really the focus there. Um, it's not the fact that the less you say, the better. Um, although sometimes it is. Uh, it asking ask questions gives you the information that you need to just prepare yourself to be successful, right? Getting an idea of what that kid's background might be or um, their potential needs for that week. It gives you information that you might not be getting off of a piece of paper that the parents filled out weeks ago, if not months ago, when they signed up for camp. So ask those questions, get to know the things you need to do. Um, the parents are going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, and if they don't, if, and they're trying to hide something from you, usually you can kind of squeeze it out of them if you ask enough questions, right? Like, um, you're going to figure out if that maybe that kid has some behavioral issues in school that might reflect back to camp, right? And then you might also start to, you know, think about how can I rectify those behavioral issues. Um, and those don't have to be direct questions to the parents like, hey, did, has Johnny ever been suspended from school? Uh, has Johnny ever had detention? You don't have to ask those questions, but you might ask this question like, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, what did Johnny's friends say about him, right? Like that's a really funny one to give to parents because parents are going to stop and pause for a second and think about who's Johnny's friends and what they actually say about him. Um, and they'll give you a little bit of a fun answer with that, I think too. And it lets you have a little bit of fun with the parents and let them know that you're going to enjoy some, some moments with their kids. Um, moving on. I think it's really important that you don't make promises you can't keep to parents, right? Don't tell a parent that your kid is going to be doing some type of activity that they might not be doing right now. With that being said, if you know something for sure, don't be scared to clarify for parents. And, you know, if a parent is like, oh, well, you know, uh, well, we thought that, uh, you know, Johnny's so excited to go horseback riding. And you know that Johnny is nine years old. He's not allowed on the horseback riding program at your camp because horseback riding doesn't start till 12. You can say something along the lines of like, oh, I'm not so sure if our cabin is going to be horseback riding this week. Do you know what you could do? Moving to my next point here. Let's have our camp director go and clarify that you know leave clarifying to your supervisor you do not need to sit there and tell parents what's what and how it works and every little thing about camp right if there's something that you can tell parents are going to be a little controversial about like you know they were signing up for camp didn't read the fine print whatever it might be it is not your job to start that conversation with a parent you say oh man i think you would have i think you might want to go and talk to oliver or you might want to go and talk to matt because they can clarify that a little bit better for you about how horseback riding works for, you know, eight year olds, right? You know, and you can, and you can go from there. So I think that's really important. The next is, and I've given this advice before, have a notebook on you for check-in day. Why you don't at this point, and 66 podcasts in, if you have not heard this tip at least three times, I do not know what's going on in our podcast, but have something on you on that first day. Camp Winona and all camps that I have worked at and supervised, we have our wonderful um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs that we focus on. So we call it Maslow Sheets. And um, again, if it is in the show notes somewhere, I can go and find it if Matt needs to put it in these show notes, but it is essentially covering all of your campers needs and the questions you do need to ask to make sure that you have those things. And guess what? Sometimes you recognize that maybe a camper did not pack their toothbrush right there when you're talking to the parents. You can make a note of it and then you get to do this really cool thing where you go don't worry mom we got toothbrushes this goes to my supervisor they go and collect it your kid will be um coming back tonight and when they check into the cabin there will be a toothbrush waiting here for johnny right um it shows how prepared and that there is a system of preparation in there for those parents who are sending those kids to camp right it is there it is down pat we got it covered you forgot something we got it Oh, you totally forgot to pack Johnny underwear. Pfft, no big deal. It's in my notes. We're going to get it covered. Worst comes to worst. It comes out of your trading post account. But you know what you don't have to do? You don't have to run to Walmart and drive back. We've got that handled, right? Um, 
So have that notebook, have those Maslow sheets, whatever it might be for you guys, but be prepared and write it down so you don't forget and parents know that you do care and you're gonna get it done. Um, and the last one, that this was a new idea that some of my staff came up at the end of last summer and I'm really, really thinking about implementing it. And this is called the parent journal. So man, oh man, is it really tough to do documentation during the summer? I know for all those camp directors out there who are wondering. So there was this great idea that instead of trying to write this like letter and report at the end of the day, every single time you do something called the parent journal. And that is for those more creative writing kind of people who might be on your staff at the end of every day, they do get to write their report at the end of the day. They're writing a report throughout the week that will then be given to their parents, but they document it each day, kind of like a captain's log. So um, you can even theme it to the week if you wanted to, was one of the ideas one of my staff had, such a good idea. Um, but then when the parents get there at the end of the week, or maybe a parent is wondering what's going on in the cabin, you go and take a picture of that captain's log that your staff gets to write every day, or even the kids can help write, and it's a documentation of what happened with their day. And you can send that over to the parent or you can have a little booklet for them when they check out at the end of the week. It's such a cute idea um, that I love a lot. And uh, we might see if we will try to do it this summer, uh, but it's definitely something that piqued my interest. And if it piques one camp director's interest, it might be another camp director's tool. Um, or it might be just something that you do for your cabin as a counselor because you're a first-class counselor, classy. And you are going to just you know have a little fun this week and keep a little journal uh, while your campers are there and write like a daily report, keep it positive, you know, all the fun things that happen to you guys, maybe a problem that came across your plate and your campers overcame it, um, just like any good captain's log should be. And then at the end of the week, um, you can have a really cool last night at camp where you read the captain's log to your kids. And then maybe before checkout, you just run over to a copy machine, scan those pages, print it off enough for your 12 campers' parents, staple them together. And then when the parents come to pick them up, you just hand off a little caps lock to them and be like, hey, this is something that we worked on this week that we want you to know about, but it's a little report on our week. Because parents, if there's one thing they um, do not like about camp, it is the fact that they have no idea what happened to their child for that week. And this might be a really good way for you to show them in a really cool way. And it shows how professional and amazing you are as a counselor. So um, that's that's my little like trick in this little section, how to talk to parents. You don't even have to say a word at the end of the week. You just look at the parents and say, hey, look, I was able to methodically think out exactly what I wanted to say to you with time so I don't stumble over myself and I put it into this little cute book that I can now hand to you. So I don't have to have a fully fledged conversation, but I can say, look how talented of a counselor I am that I have this written report for you at the end of the week that you can just take home and read in the car or whatever you want to do. But now we don't have to have this lengthy, awkward conversation where you ask me how your kid behaved all week because you're going to get this really cool report. Um, I love the idea. Um, and it's really helpful for me to those counselors who are a little bit more introverted and don't want to have that 20 minute conversation with a parent at the end of the week, but maybe are like, look what I can do. Yay. So I like it. Um, with that being said, that's our show for how to talk to adults. Thank you for talking to a couple of adults tonight. Um, but we have this thing called Eggle, the ever growing, ever learning. It's a trick or a tip or a game or a song for counselors to use to be better every day. Now, uh, we do have these wonderful people at Ultimate Camp Resource, and I'll let Matt explain a little bit how cool they are for you guys to hear. Yeah, so the Eggle now, if you've been listening to this season, is we, we are excited to have our first sponsor uh, after six seasons. We uh, are partnering with Ultimate Camp Resource to um, help bring you the podcast and, and help get the podcast out there. So uh, you should definitely, if you haven't checked out Ultimate Camp Resource, I don't know what you've been doing, um, but Ultimate Camp Resource offers more than a thousand free descriptions of games, skits, songs, and other camp related activities to just help make your summer that little bit more fun and rewarding for campers of all ages and abilities. Um, so definitely check out Ultimate Camp Resource. Um, I think Oliver is up today for highlighting one of the great resources at Ultimate Camp Resource, but also something new that they are bringing is um, they have stickers and camp apparel and, uh, and it's like really cool stuff. It's not just like a crappy t-shirt. Uh, you should definitely check it out. It's at it's a camp thing.com. It's a camp thing.com. So thank you ultimate camp resource for being our sponsor and Oliver, why don't you start off with, uh, the eggle that uh, you can find at the ultimate camp resource website. 
Yeah, first off, um, let's get into it. So you jump into that website and the first thing you see is that there's categories, you can go into those categories, there's categories in categories. So if you're looking for you know, your song, a skit, a game, uh, whatever it might be, you just go in there, you see what you're looking for, you click on it and then you go, oh man, I can get even more specific on that. So I did that today and I found my way into the large group games, always one of my favorite things, just entertaining so many people at one time. And the game that I like is one that I have played before. I have a little bit of a different name for it. I call it Zombie Ball, um, but they call it Monarch. And here's the really cool thing is this game also comes with a video to teach you how to play. So for those of you guys who read directions and can't exactly picture what they're talking about, there is a visual learning device for you as well. So the way this game works, um, they call it Monarch. I call it zombie ball. Um, you have a border that everyone plays in, depending on the number of people, you can vary the border. You can even vary the border as the game plays. So you can do it as a team building activity, talk about how that changes the dynamic of the game. But nonetheless, you will have one person who will start with a ball. They can run as much as they want at the beginning of the game. But as soon as they tag someone with that ball, they can throw it at them, hit them anywhere from the neck or below or shoulder below it. <clears throat> Uh, that person will join their team of monarchs who will then be passing the ball around trying to hit other people. Now you can move when you are not holding the ball, but when you're holding the ball, you stand still. This means that your campers are going to have to use this thing called teamwork and pass the ball around to get better shots as everyone stays inside of this small condensed little playing field. Um, a couple of really good tricks and good debrief things is you know, how do you communicate who is a monarch as the game goes along because people start blending into the crowd. Some teams will decide to do things like put their hands on their head so you can identify who the monarchs are. But then some people will be like, no, we don't want to do that so we can sneak around and get behind people and make it more advantage. But here's the deal. While they're playing this game, your kids are starting to do these things called strategize and problem solve and communicate these things to each other. It's so Beautiful. I love it. So um, it's one of my favorite games. It's a great uh, game to play in your team building, but also just for fun with a bunch of kids because they get running, they get moving, and they get a little bit of energy out of them um, <clears throat> in this fantastic game that I love to play. Um, oh, and one other note, I've also heard this game be called Wolf Ball. So a cool way that they can identify each other is by howling for the ball and they work together as a pack of wolves, but uh, they can also hide in sheep's clothing. Um, as they play. So you, there's a really cool story that can kind of go with that one as well, which I can like. So great game. Thank you, Ultimate Camp Resource, for putting that out there so that camp professionals throughout all of time will be able to hop on the internet, check a look at that, watch the video, read the rules, adapt as they see fit, and play some great games with kids. Nice. That's my angle. What's yours? Okay, my uh, my angle this week is uh, about camp gear. I, I think we've talked about camp gear on this podcast at least 10 times, and that's getting, you know, all the tools that you need. We, we've talked about, like, a great backpack. We've talked about raincoats. And I want to give you a tip on how you can find these things for uh, prices that are reasonable because outdoor gear is expensive if you're paying full price for it. But rather than just wait until maybe Black Friday or Cyber Monday or the holiday season or whenever things go on sale, there are places online where you can get them um, year round for really good prices. And I have a Canadian resource and an American resource for you. Um, I can't speak to the quality of the American resources, but um, I'll throw some links in the show notes. So uh, The Last Hunt is the Canadian outdoor outlet store. And then there's a couple for the States, but one that I found that looks pretty good is the outdooroutlet.com. And the way that I can tell you, at least the way the last hunt works is that it is like discounted prices, but name brand stuff. So I, for instance, got a Patagonia sweater for 65% off the regular price. Um, and I got an outdoor research sweater for 70% off. And the trick is though, usually you can't do returns and you have to meet a certain threshold for shipping, which is usually fine. So my tip to you is figure out what your size is in a couple of the brands that you like. So if you like wearing Patagonia stuff or Lululemon or Carhartt, I, I don't know what, what the big American brands are, but um, for me, I know that a large outdoor research sweater or t-shirt or top is gonna fit me really well. 
So I, I go on the lasthunt.com and I search outdoor research and then I can find a sweater that I really like or a, a shirt that I really like and I know it's going to fit me and I know that I'm generally going to like it because I know what, what colors I like. Um, so even though you can't return it, it makes it a little risky. If you know the size, then you're good to go. So what I, what I might do is I might go to my local store that has full price Patagonia stuff and I might just go have fun trying on stuff, knowing that I'm never going to buy it because on my phone the whole time I'm on the last hunt while I'm there searching. Now that I know a large Patagonia sweater fits me well, boom, then I can buy that um, on the side. So that's how you can start to build up your outdoor gears. I I bought a backpack from there. I bought my my rain jacket. That's like a, a Merrill, really nice rain jacket. Um, and I haven't paid full price for nice outdoor stuff in a very long time. So that's my tip. There you go. Shopping with Matt. Not going to buy anything. <laughs> just just looking. And then yeah. you find it at a cheaper price online. I like it. I can only say that I do that all the time in bookstores now. Mm. I, won't pay, I won't pay full price for a book. All right. Um, but that is some shopping tips and some game tips from us. So keep track of those eggles, you guys. It's going to make you a first-class counselor. Um, if you did enjoy today's show, we'd be so grateful if you left us a review wherever you were listening to our podcast. Like I said, this is 66 hours of podcasting for Matt and I, which is really exciting. Uh, your ratings and reviews not only tell us what you like or don't like about the show, but it helps boost our rankings and helps more people discover the wonderful things that we're talking about. And please make sure you check out the show notes. We've got this one. We've got the, the links to these resources. Ultimate Camp resource stuff is there. The Ford method for this episode. All that will be in the show notes for you to check out. You can find it at gocamp.pro slash FCC. And a way that you can really help us out is ratings and reviews are great, but just tell a friend. Tell a friend about uh, First Class Counselors. Um, that would be lovely of you. All right. So thanks for listening, friends. And remember, camp is camp and camp's all good.